So this is the work of Dr. Helen Damaris, who did her molecular PhD in the molecular analysis of the precursor of retinoblastoma retinoma. She showed the molecular difference between retinoma and retinoblastoma, which is very exciting. And we'll talk about that more now. <coughs> but her real interest was always education and global activities. So she's got a whole career in how to deal with the, um, not the medical side of retinoblastoma, but everything else around it, including genetic counseling, but also how families respond, how they respond to stress, how they deal with everything. One of her undergraduate students did a beautiful study in Canada assessing parents' stress in response to the diagnosis to China. This child, this child, she wasn't a child, she's an undergraduate student, um, is um, a, a very smart person and she was, speaks fluent Mandarin so she did part of her work in Beijing and has great friends and everything's worked beautifully on that study. That's the kind of work that Helen Damaris is doing. But one of her exciting projects is this map. This is, uh, it's easy to go and find this. It's just put into the URL 1rbw.org. It takes you to the, the map. So, um, pick the treatment center, or we'll pick, we'll pick China. This should be by. And it should take us to China. I have no idea how fast it will be. Yeah, it's pretty good. So this is a world map. It hasn't honed in on China yet, but here's China. And it's showing all the green circles are different institutes that treat retinoblastoma worldwide. There's Finland. Stockholm. Is it underneath there? There. There's your center. And if we click on that center, it pulls us closer to it and it should be, should show up. The details, the details there for the same time to get over there. So if we look here at country information, um, it should uh, not seem to be working by all this. It's not taking me where I want to go, but it should show us details of the country. If I put in here, I don't know what I'll get when I put this in because I haven't looked. Um,
decided that child needed treatment that was not available in Toronto but was in China, we sent the child back to China. And then the child came back to Toronto for us to finish the laser cryo work. And then the child's back in China. And I've done three house calls in China on that child. So that's how the world should work. We had a really exciting one where there was a child I'd seen in Kenya two years in a row. And the work, the carefully done, high quality work in Kenya was not working. This child had her last eye was unilateral. Uh, not even her other eye was gone, already gone. And she had a 2020 macula and she was going to lose that eye. So we arranged um, with some difficulties because they didn't even have birth certificates when we started to try to arrange this. But ultimately got that child to travel from Kenya to China. She had a procedure done that saved her life for the rest of her life. Her eye was cured. It's a very beautiful result. And then she went back to Kenya and she had to come back to get silicone oil removal. And she's back in Kenya and she's a beautiful child with a 2020 eye for life. That cost a little bit of money. Most of it was in travel. But that's the kind of thing we can work on worldwide. So every child has an opportunity for optimal care. And that's a very exciting model. This map leads us to that. The other thing on the map, the blue symbols, I think are genetic test labs. I think that's, this should be, I'll just try to get onto the blue cursor. I can't. Yeah, there's GeneSeq. So that's the information on GeneSeq. Uh, and you can find that for anywhere all over here. The blue one should be, maybe, maybe it's in fact genetics. I'm not sure. Yeah, it's hard to line it up. No. Yes. Oh, yes, yes. 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 There. yes. Yes. But it's finding more, uh, more details because I it. So that should show impact genetics, etc. So there's a rich source of information here to look at. So I encourage you to go and look at this yourself. You also can find all sorts of epidemiology because there's country information, worldwide distribution. You can add, put in advanced map filters to say what data you want to know, like the number of cases in a country in here is all buried under here. So I encourage you to go and play with it yourself. And that's the work of Dr. Helen Damaris, who's now a scientist at the Hospital of Sick Children.